Okay, so for the first unit, you're going to look at, or for the first part of this unit, you're going to look at what is a protist. And you can see here that they are organisms which carry out their own metabolism. So they either do this through consumption of other organisms or by themselves. And they can be unicellular, multicellular, microscopic, or very large. So we're not only looking at single cellular organisms, we also could be looking at multicellular, but they have unique properties that don't fit into those other categories. So the types of protease, so we can divide these into two major main categories. The first one would be what is a protozoan. So a protozoan is different than a protease. It's a category of a protease. So the first thing you're going to want to take a look at is they are animal-like protease that are unicellular and um, heterotrophic. So they have to rely on other organisms for their um, uh, metabolism. So you see an example of that right here. So if you zoom in on this guy, um, this basically says that, you know, you can see that even though he might have some green in here, he's mostly non-colored and he's going to use other organisms. And then you also have what is an algae. And so an algae, we think of algae maybe as a plant, but in, in, in fact they are actually protease. Um, mainly because they don't have organ systems or they don't have a structure to be able to take up nutrients through the entire plant. So when they are single cellular components, they might be connected together, but they rely uh, individually on algae. And you see that here with this guy here. This is spirogyrin. You can see the spiralness here. And these are chloroplast rings. And that is a type of algae that you commonly see found in plants um, or in ponds. Uh, they do not have organs and they allow them to grow upright roots, stems, and leaves. So continuing on, we're going to first talk about the protozoans. Protozoans basically can divide into four different types. Uh, they're, they're grouped according to their movement. So they can move by cilia, flagella, or pseudopodia. So what are pseudopodia? If you look at pseudopodia, you can break this word down. The word pseudo is going to mean false, and podia Pod means foot, so they have false feet, and you see that right here, okay? And they basically use extensions of the cytoplasm for moving, and that, that's, that's what this says right here, is moving. So they actually can move around their food and engulf it. So these might be other things like algae. So if you um, take a look at this guy here, you can see that he almost has algae inside of him. So they literally just surround that algae and take it in, and they're going to use that algae for their nutrients. Okay. Uh, other four types. Of, the other four types of protozoans. You have amoebas, which are down here, and so you can see those uh, right here. And then you have flagellates. So you can see that they use flagella, and we know flagella are um, to the two little tails that you see hanging out at the end of this guy right here. So that tells us that he's a flagellate. We also have a guy that's similar that's called a paramecium, and he is right here, and he uses cilia for movement. And, and you can see the difference between these two. This guy has a, this guy here has a um, flagella, whereas this guy here has these little hairs around the outside, and those are um, cilia. So, and then the last one we have is a vorticella, and this would be a sporozoan. And basically, they form by spores, and they use things like air and other organisms for movement. So looking more in depth into each one of these, the first type is an amoeba, and so we said an amoeba uses pseudopodia for movement. They don't have a cell wall. Uh, their nutrients can diffuse directly through the cell membrane. They tend to live in hypotonic environments and make their contract contractile vacuole pump out water. If you remember back, the contractile or the hypotonic environment basically means it's going to explode. So that means the concentration is less out, so they on the outside, so they actually have to pump the water out via a thing called a contractile va vacuole. And they reproduce asexually, so that basically means that they reproduce by dividing, but because they have a nucleus, they're going to use mitosis and just divide to make a new organism. Uh, flagellates, on the other hand, um, the, you see here, they are considered more animal-like, which is why you have the Zomastogenia as the, um, phy or the phylum name, and then there are organisms that have one or more flagella, and some can be parasitic. Looking at the second to the last type of uh, protozoan, again, these are the four types of protozoans. 
you have ciliates, and ciliates basically use cilia to move. Uh, an example is a paramecia, and they are complex unicellular organisms with organelles and structures that are each adapted to carry out a distinct function. Uh, cilia have thousands of tiny hair-like structures, and they're used for movement. Uh, they also have an oral groove um, with food that captures the area where the bacteria are found. Uh, they have a gullet, which moves foods into the gullet, which is a sac-like structure, which becomes a food vacuole. They have a micronucleus and a macronucleus, so they have two different nucleuses, which you'll take a look at when you look at these organisms underneath a uh, microscope. They also have the anal pore, which is used for excretion, and they also have a contractile vacuole, which allows them to regulate their water um, pressure inside the cell. And the last type of protozoan is a sporozoan. So sporozoans uh, produce spores. They are reproductive cells that form without fertilization and produce new organisms. They are all par parasitic, and they actually cause malaria. An example of that would be plasmodium.